Dear friends, welcome to St. John Vianney's celebration of Holy Thursday. Due to the corona pandemic, the public are prohibited to celebrate these sacred liturgies, which is a special difficulty for all of us during this Holy Week. However, we're delighted to bring to you, to your homes, uh, this celebration of Holy Thursday. Because of the special circumstances this year, uh, two aspects of the liturgy that are generally a part of it, the washing of the, uh, of the feet, as well as the Eucharistic procession uh, at the end of the liturgy are suspended for, for obvious reasons to safeguard the public. And so I invite you now to enter into this beautiful and sacred moment in the life of the church, the Holy Triduum, for the next three days as we enter into Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. We invite all of you now to prepare your minds and hearts to encounter our Lord Jesus Christ in the celebration of the Sacred Eucharist. Anis Angelicus, fit panis hominum, dat panis celicus figuris termi. Dominum Pauper Pauper Servus et humilis Pauper Pauper Servus et humilis Welcome to St. John Vianney Parish in Gladwin, Pennsylvania. It is good for us to be together as much as the circumstances allow during this time. Kindly stand. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and eat without money. Come to drink without price. My feast of gladness will feed your spirit with faith and fullness of life. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. My bread will ever sustain you through days of sorrow and woe. 
My wine will flow like a sea of gladness to flood the depths of your soul. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, on this solemnity of Holy Thursday, when our Lord instituted the two great sacraments of the Holy Eucharist and the Holy Orders, we come together as God's family, mindful are of our sins, acknowledging our sins now, and preparing ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to be handed himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery 
the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first of the year, the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loin skirt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, and you, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are, Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord? For all the good he has done for me, the cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed for he is clean all over, so you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, he put his garments back on and reclined at table again, and he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Years ago, a poor family from a tiny village in the former Yugoslavia decided to emigrate to the United States. The family consisted of a mother and a father, a teenage boy, and three little girls. A week before their ship sailed, the family's relatives and loved ones threw them a bon voyage party. Their relatives and friends the family some practical gifts 
of food supplies like loaves of bread and blocks of cheese for their trip across the Atlantic. The family boarded the Italian uh, ship which was to take them to America. Since they only spoke the local dialect in their country, they did not understand Italian and being a bit overwhelmed by everything they saw and heard, they decided to move quickly to their place. It was also a cold winter day and so they headed immediately to their third class cabin below deck. They stayed there huddled together and ate their bread and cheese. After several days at sea, the teenage boy grew a little restless, and with his father's permission, he headed out to explore the ship. After a couple hours, when the boy did not return, the worried father set out himself looking for the boy. The father finally found his son in the dining room, sitting at a large table, eating from a plate overflowing with meats and vegetables and desserts. The father's heart stopped as he envisioned spending his first days in the United States in prison for the debt his son incurred. For the father knew he had no money to pay for all of this sumptuous food which his son had ordered and was eating. When the son saw his father's frightened face, he cried out to him, Father, don't worry. All the food here is free. All of this banquet of food comes with the emission price of the ticket to the ship. While we have been fasting below deck, everyone else has been feasting in this dining room. How tragic unbeknownst to the family below deck, that the reality was with the price of their ticket also came their invitation to a banquet of spectacular food. It was a missed opportunity. In a very similar way, God has prepared a sumptuous Eucharistic banquet for all of humanity and everyone who has a ticket to life also has a ticket, an invitation to the Eucharistic banquet. But sadly, too many don't understand and too many are missing from the greatest banquet of their life. Too much ignorance and too much fear are just some of the reasons why so many people are so far from enjoying the Eucharistic banquet like the poor immigrant family from the former Yugoslavia. Too many people don't realize that with their God-given gift of life comes the beautiful invitation to the gift of eternal life, which is contained in the Eucharist. On Holy Thursday, we celebrate the institution of the Holy Eucharist, along with the institution of the priesthood, to marvelous, wonderful sacraments. And in a special way, we are called to reflect upon the great gift that God has given us through the sacraments, preeminently the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the greatest treasure of the church because not only, like all of the sacraments, does the Eucharist confer grace, but it presents the author of grace. The Eucharist is the greatest prayer because it is the only perfect sacrifice, the only perfect gift, the only perfect offering which humanity can give back to our Heavenly Father. At Mass, specifically at the end of the Eucharistic prayer, after the consecration has taken, the priest, in his role, acting as mediator and representative of the people, raise up the consecrated body and blood of Jesus Christ as a perfect sacrifice which has reconciled God to man. And this moment of, is a representation of the once and for all sacrifice 
that was made by Jesus on Calvary. The separated body and blood of our Lord in an unbloody manner is a representation of the lifeless body of Christ, a perfect and infinite sacrifice to God the Father. And it is the reparation for the infinite offense against God by all the sins of humanity. Only an infinite act by God can save us from the infinite offense caused by humanity against God. And it is this moment, the most perfect moment of the week, when we gather as a family of families in the parish community and we lift up the priest and the people together to God. We present to God the Father, his Son, the perfect sacrifice. And that moment the priest sings the Eucharistic prayer all glory and honor has been given to the Father in the Son and through the Spirit. And the people singing in agreement respond the great Amen. But God's goodness is not to be outdone. Even though humanity, God has given us the ability to give God perfect praise, God is so good that the, the next moment in the liturgy is too beautiful for words. It takes place in silence. The priest now acting on behalf of God as his priest, mediator, and minister, then now brings back the gift from God to humanity. The priest now holding the body and blood of Christ aloft receives the gift of the body and blood from God the Father, and he brings it down upon the table of the Lord. What was lifted up from the altar of sacrifice to God the Father now has been returned to the table of the Lord as a gift for humanity, and all of us are invited, all of us are called to share in this banquet, this great gift. God is so good that the Eucharist that we offer to him as perfect praise is given back to us, to be received by us, to make us holy, to make us like God. It is this action as the priest, as mediator, which is the culmination of his ministry, which we also celebrate on Holy Thursday. The priest, as mediator on behalf of humanity, offering a perfect praise and honor to our Heavenly Father and as God's representative to receive this perfect gift and share it with God's people. The liturgy continues in the Eucharistic prayer. After the Eucharistic prayer, we all rise, and we pray the Our Father. And why? Because it is the now the perfect prayer which our Lord himself taught us a prayer of thanksgiving to Almighty God for the gift of the perfect gift he has given us in the Eucharist, and we respond by the Our Father. But one of my most favorite moments in the Eucharistic liturgy is near the end of the liturgy of the Eucharist when the priest raises the consecrated host and chalice and using the words of John the Baptist shows the Eucharistic Lord to the people and says, the words of John the Baptist. Behold the Lamb of God. The priest points to the Eucharistic Lord. This is the only moment in the liturgy when the priest's face disappears. How fitting it is that like John the Baptist, our mission as priest is to point others to Christ, to bring others to Christ and then disappear. We pray the prayer of Saint John the Baptist, I must decrease and the Lord must increase. In today's gospel, the, ev uh, the evangelist recounts the events of that first Holy Thursday evening when our Lord Jesus Christ gathered his 12 apostles in the upper room and he instituted the Eucharistic banquet, inviting his 12 apostles to do this action in remembrance of him. 
But our Lord, immediately after instituting the first Eucharist, asked his disciples, do you realize what I have done for you? Do you realize what I have done for you? The same question our Lord asks us tonight as we meditate upon the greatest gift of the church, the Eucharist. And our Lord asks us, do you realize what I have done for you? Like the Yugoslavian family aboard ship, and like the apostles in the Last Supper, we too are in danger of not being fully aware of the splendor of the banquet that has been placed before us, the beauty, the sumptuousness, and the generosity of God's great gift to us, to humanity, in the Eucharist, remains somewhat hidden, not fully understood, and not fully appreciated. On this sacred evening, Holy Thursday, Holy Mother, the Church, once again, enters in to this, the most sacred moments of the liturgical year. This liturgy of Holy Thursday begins the Holy Triduum of Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. During these three sacred moments, we recall the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who came into the world to accomplish the will of the Father and to redeem humanity and a fallen world. And so on this sacred night, Holy Thursday, our Lord at the Last Supper with his closest collaborators instituted the Holy Eucharist so that he could remain with his people always and everywhere until the end of time. On this sacred evening, Jesus instituted the priesthood. Sacred orders, which are inextricably connected to the Eucharist. The sacrament of holy orders is an in service of the other sacraments, preeminently the Eucharist. Turning to beautiful imagery, spousal imagery, that just as Christ loves his bride, the church, and as the bridegroom, Christ, lays down his life, so too the priest is ordered toward the body of Christ, both the Eucharistic body and the mystical body of Christ, which is the people of God. And so the priest is ordered by service to the Eucharist and to the people of God. It is for this reason that God has instituted the great sacrament in Christ Jesus of the priesthood in service of the Eucharist and in service of the people of God, the body of Christ, the Eucharistic body and the mystical body. On this great feast day, the church helps us to better understand and better appreciate this Eucharistic banquet, which God has prepared and places before humanity. What is rather interesting is in today's gospel from John, we realize that he does not record this moment of the institution as the other gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and even St. Paul. No, the evangelist John uh, records uh, what is recorded by Matthew, Mark, and Luke is that Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body. Jesus took up the cup of wine, blessed it, and shared it with his disciples, and said, this is my blood. However, the evangelist John in tonight's gospel recounts another special moment at the Last Supper. He writes how Jesus took off his outer garment and putting a towel around his waist, stooped down and began to wash the feet of his disciples. The great evangelist and theologian John is a master of symbols. He is asking us to see the parallel between the institution narrative, the four other accounts found in the Synoptic Gospels and St. Paul, and his account of the washing of the feet. These divine actions, the Eucharistic service, and the washing of the feet 
are about service. In the gospel, Jesus presents himself as the one who has come not to be served, but to serve. John beautifully illustrates that our Lord willingly serves service in the washing of the feet, which normally we would celebrate in this liturgy and Eucharist on Holy Thursday night. But due to the presence of the pandemic, the, this, this uh, rite of the washing of the 12, uh, the feet of the 12 apostles, the, the representation has been suspended uh, as we are without a congregation and observing social distancing. But this uh, beautiful image that we can call to mind from our past celebrations, as we can call to mind is the Eucharist, is a powerful symbol of service. What emerges out of the sacred liturgy in the Eucharist, in the priesthood, in the washing of the feet, is service. As we meditate upon the Eucharist, as we meditate upon this great banquet, let us reflect upon the question which our Lord poses to each one of us. Do you realize what I have done for you? My dear friends, let us rise together and place our petitions before the throne of God. On this night before his death, Jesus sat at table with his disciples, gathered together to represent that sacred supper. Let us now join Christ and pray to our Heavenly Father for our needs and the needs of the whole world. For the church on earth, that we, we may be guided to a greater understanding and exercise of the perfect love and service of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of power and influence in the world, locally, nationally, and internationally, that their public service may truly respect the spirit of Christ's sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work in health care, that God will give wisdom and justice to those working to contain the virus, knowledge and insight to those searching for treatments or for a vaccine, and strength and compassion to those caring for the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in this parish community, that we may continually reflect in our lives the Eucharist of love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, particularly those with the coronavirus, that God will heal them and restore them to their families and communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the dead, especially those who have passed suddenly due to the coronavirus, that the sacrifice of the Eucharist may bring them eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly and merciful Father, we come before you and present our many needs to you. Hear our humble prayers, which we make through our Lord Jesus Christ, our eternal High Priest, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. When 
When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony born of all we've known together of Christ's love and agony. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these sacred mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial as we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take 
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who now cannot receive the Blessed Sacrament, let us pray together a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now love God in return. Ubi caritas est vera, est vera. Deus ibi est, Deus ibi in true communion let us gather, may all division cease, and in their place be Christ the Lord, our risen Prince of Peace. Who be caritas est vera, Est vera, Deus ibi est, Deus ibi est. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. My dear friends, before our final blessing, I just wanted to send, send from our hearts a, a warm uh, word of thanks for your participation in this great Eucharistic liturgy. I know that nobody wants to be away from the Lord at this moment, and we pray for a, a, a speedy, a speedy uh, end to the coronavirus and, uh, and uh, the restoration as best we can have, uh, restoration to our family life, our academic work and work in the world. But for the time being, we're grateful to Almighty God for the, the, the gift that he's given us of life, and we're grateful for the gift of the church at this moment and in a very special way on this joyful evening of Holy Thursday when the church celebrates uh, the church herself, but in particular the great sacraments of the Holy Eucharist and the priesthood. It's a moment of joy. And so try to resonate that joy in your homes uh, to feel God's, God's, God's love and God's truth with you at this moment. And so at this moment, on behalf of our staff and other parishioners, I say we miss you, we look forward uh, to see you soon, 
Uh, we, ask you, uh, to, we ask God to bless you, to keep you safe, and to strengthen and encourage you as you are and are called to be beautiful people of faith, people of love, and people of hope. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a lovely evening, everyone. God bless you. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the words thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. Sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Lord, Lord God, with shouts of acclamation, and take me. my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art,